Hello everyone, Lexi here. So, I've talked about this album before, but only in the context of, like, analysis work. And I think it'd be doing it a disservice if I didn't rank all of the songs. Like, like on a tier list kind of format. Which is what this is. As you can see, I've tastefully color-coded all of them, using the colors from the album cover. Now you might be wondering, why is there no D tier? I don't think any of the songs on here are bad. All of them are good. Some are definitely better than others, but all of them are good. You're probably not going to hear me say stuff like, oh, the music is really good on this one. Unless the song's like especially enjoyable. Let's just ease into it with a introduction to the snow. Now this is the introduction song to the album, so I feel like it has a bit like of a, I feel like it has a lot to live up to in my opinion. It's got to set the mood for the album. It's got to make sure everything is set up properly. It's also got to be a good song on its own. And I think it does a pretty good job. It's short, sweet, straight to the point. But uh, the two songs following it do a better job setting up like actual characters and actual premises going on. Introduction is much more of like a vibe setter, if that makes sense. It gives me that impression because of the way the song sounds. The singer's voice has a retro crust to it that kind of helps make the song feel like it fits in a time period. However, there's not a whole lot of content to analyze because it's the shortest song and it just feels a little lacking. So overall, I think I'm going to put Introduction to the Snow in B tier. Uh, by the way, I made all these icons myself. The tier list will be linked in the description if you want to make your own. All right, next we have Island to Thyself. Island to Thyself is super self-explanatory and where I think it goes. I think it's one of the best songs on the whole album. It's got a lot of really, really good lore. It's really catchy and it's just a banger. I love dancing to this song, which really helps like give it this very positive energy as well as just being super like poetic and interesting. It also has a music video, which is really cool. It's animated in this really great style, which I really enjoy. But the one thing that it feels kind of lacking on is uh, the last few seconds. It means I have a hard time looping the song. If I want to listen to it back to back, there's like this do 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 thing. If you know what I'm talking about, uh, it's right at the end there. And uh, it just kind of slows down, like, looping the song. But overall, I think IL definitely deserves S tier. It's not my favorite song, which I think, uh... You guys might get a little mad at for my favorite. Black Rainbows is kind of like... The other side of a coin to Isle to Thyself. Black Rainbows is this very nice music piece. Both of them are very nice and they both feel... They both feel very unique in the way to deliver their art, but Black Rainbows kind of drops the ball on the lore. Like, you obviously have Stella Octangula in Black Rainbows, but that's about it. There's nothing really too deep about the song. Uh, it's kind of like a Passover thing, just kind of like a transition point. So I think Black Rainbows goes in C tier. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good song, but I feel like it's outclassed. Next we have White Ball. I made it the moon, obviously. You'll understand why when, uh... You'll understand why I put the moon when episode 3 of my analysis series comes out. The song is very beautiful. It has very beautiful instrumentation. But I think one of the aspects of it that is a little lacking is, like, crazy complex lyrics. They're perfectly fine, and they get the point of the song across pretty nice, but I don't think there's a whole lot to analyze lore-wise unless you really know what you're looking for. I think it's not like Black Rainbow's tier, but it's definitely one of the more serviceable songs on the album. I think I'm going to put it above Introduction to the Snow, because there's definitely more depth in a White Ball than there is an Introduction on its own but I feel like Introduction is a bit more important of a piece overall, so they're about the same. Next up is Murders. Now I know this kind of splits the community down the middle a little bit. Some people really like Murders, some people really hate Murders, and uh, 
I think I'm in the former camp. The song is super emotionally strong, like it's really emotionally charged, like... There's just so much that I... I find myself, like, getting enraptured in it. It feels like it has the ups and downs of, like, an actual, like, story. And I think it's one of the few songs that actually, like, strikes an emotional chord with me. Island to the Self does that, where it's like, man, this song makes me feel cheery and happy, but Murders makes me feel, like, tense and on edge. It's a great piece of rhetorical work, and my favorite part is the ending bit, where it's like, it's the famous TikTok part. You know, that one. It's just such a strong, such a strong piece. I love it. I love it so much. I think I'm going to put it above Isle, just because of how strong the emotional reaction I get from it is. I think I prefer- I think it- they're, they're very similar though, like very close. I think I might prefer listening to Isle on loop, but I think I appreciate what Murders is more, if that makes sense. Next up, we have Space Station Level 7. This song usually gets last place on every ranking I've ever seen of this album, and I think it's kind of undeserved. Now obviously there is a language barrier because it's in Japanese and French and the tiniest bit of English. So most English speakers can't understand the full song. Now I have read the translated lyrics and I think they're super cool. And uh, just thinking about it, what really strikes me is that like, people underrate this song because they don't like, because they can't understand the lyrics on their first pass, but none of these songs are you really get all their lyrics on the first pass other than maybe Time Machine. So it's like, when you go back and go through the song again, you really appreciate what it's trying to say. Uh, spoilers, uh, our main character is basically like a booted out of heaven, and I think it's a very, it's very important for like building what the album is trying to be about and without it, you can't understand what's going on. Honestly, this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I think people ignoring this song and what it actually sing is the reason there's a lot of like misinterpretation about what the song is trying to say. And on top of all that, it's just like very beautiful. There's a lot of horns and uh, violin and uh, there's a lot of really nice instrumentation. And you have to remember, this is the song where the most uh, influential segment comes from. So I think this is an easy A tier for me. It's a really important piece of the whole experience. You need it to understand everything. All right, The Mind Electric. I'm gonna give a little bit of a hot take on The Mind Electric. I don't think it's the best song on this album. It's definitely really, really good, but it's not the best. Now the first thing, uh, this song is really, like, really crazy, like, off the walls crazy. And I like it. It's got a lot of different points where it zigzags from, which I think is representative of, uh, the high energy and high stakes of the song. It's something I can really picture in my head as, like, a, like a bolt of lightning bouncing back and forth. Uh, this is the song that usually gets people, like, into the album, they read it, they see this, they see the Mind Electric and are like, Ooh, this is really good. I gotta check what this is from. And uh, yeah, it's really good. And it's a really powerful piece. But uh, what I think kind of detracts it from me, uh, both a positive and a negative, is the reverse portion. Well, yes, the reverse portion is very cool. It kind of makes the song drag a little. There's a lot of cool things that come with having the reverse portion, but... Honestly, I could take it or leave it. And surprisingly, the song is not as complex as people seem to make it out to be. Like, looking at the lyrics, they're not as complex as, like, other songs that I've ranked before this, and some that I've ranked after this. It's probably one of the more basic-to-understand songs, which is probably why it's really popular. 
I say that, but Murders is like super popular as well and it's super hard to understand. I'm rambling. Uh, I think Mind Electric is gonna go low S tier, but I think it still deserves S tier. Labyrinth. All right, so the music is like some of my favorite in Labyrinth. It's just, I think the I, I think the chiptune style and the rap really stands out amongst a lot more of these like a uh, classical songs. Now a lot of these aren't actually classical, but they don't use a lot of special instruments. Like they usually tend to hover around like orchestra and guitar. But I like that Labyrinth definitely delves into like the weirder instruments. Now the rap is like out of place in this genre, but I think it sounds really good regardless. And I really like a lot of the lore that is brought in by Labyrinth. There's a lot of interesting things and uh, I'll talk about it more when I get to it, but it's just, it's just really cool all around, I think. Now, one of the things that I kind of dock it for is the music video. I like the music video, don't get me wrong. And the art looks good, but it's like... <laughs> it's kind of got like a so retro kind of feel where it's like... It feels like it was pixel art, but not like... For a reason, just because it's like a chiptune thing in the song. It's pixel art. It doesn't really have, like, a reason for it. Now, I think I'm gonna put Labyrinth in A tier. Probably above Space Station Level 7. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. Alright, Time Machine. I've mentioned it a few times, but Time Machine is very straightforward. With a lot of Rob's songs, there's not, like, a whole... A lot of room for interpretation. Like, if I had to compare the dynamic between Joe Hawley and Rob Cantor, Joe Hawley writes poetry that you need to think about a lot, but Rob tends to write more absurdism that you can, like, enjoy in the moment. And I think that Time Machine really, uh, exudes that quality that Rob brings because he wrote the song and he sung in this song and he really gives it a unique feel but it kind of doesn't mesh too well with a lot of the songs in the album it sounds good but I just wish there was more like substance to it when a lot of the rest of these songs are just like pure poetry and like a lyrical wizardry the whole way through Time Machine ends up being very plain in the end. I think I'm gonna put Time Machine here. Again, not a bad song. It's a very, all these are very good. I'm not trying to hate on Time Machine or Black Rainbows, but they definitely feel like they could have been a little better. Stranded Lullaby. Stranded Lullaby, I think, is another one of these weird songs that feels a little out of place. It fits better than Time Machine and Black Rainbows in the whole narrative, but again, it's just really kinda uninterestingly bland in its lyrics, if that makes sense. There's more depth than Time Machine, I'll give it that, but I feel like the music is not as interesting with Stranded Lullaby. It's probably the most forgettable song on the whole album. It's not one I tend to come back to a lot. And uh, it kind of doesn't feel like a good build up to Dream Sweet and C Major. It kind of feels like we've already hit the climax with Labyrinth and we're winding down. But then we have Dream Sweet and C Major being a new climax as well. It's an odd dip in the middle here. It just feels like an odd place for a falling action. Overall, I think it's not as good as Black Rainbows. Like, the thing is that Black Rainbows is at least super memorable, Time Machine is super memorable, but I don't think Stranded Lullaby is all that memorable. Alright, here's Dream Suite in C Major. 
this is a this is just it's an incredible wrap-up piece like it's seven minutes of like joe's peak like peak poetry peak lyrical mastery peak music this song like masterfully uses light motifs and i love it it calls back to so many things and it just it makes the album feel all connected like on first glance it can feel like maybe the album isn't telling a story if it's like your first listening and you're like oh well wow, these songs are all cool but dream suite and c majors i think the thing that ties it all together it's kind of like the core of the album it brings all these disconnected pieces to one place and really makes sense of everything and uh I don't know, it just really feels like a celebration. It feels like a celebration of Hawaii Part 2. Like, that's what it feels to me. Uh, my only complaint is that there's that similar ending portion to Island to Thyself, where, like, uh, it goes on for a little bit afterwards, I think, to fit. I think so it hit... I think they do that, so it hits, uh... 41 minutes and 55 seconds, which, uh... <laughs> if you know what's going on, you'll understand why they do that. But yeah, this is going to go... I think it's gonna go above Island to Thyself, but below Murders. Because I enjoy Dream Sweet and C Major a lot. And I... And it's a very important, like piece of the puzzle, but I think I personally just enjoy Murders way more as like a song, like a lore analysis song, that I have to rank it above. And then Variations on a Cloud. I actually wrote a rhetorical paper on this for a college class I did last semester. Uh, <laughs> this paper was about the weird and off-putting imagery of the song. <laughs> if you know, you know, they use a lot of stuff about 9-11 here. The song is really, like, I like the song, I think it sounds good, but it's just really tacky in the way it themes things, like a, there's a 9-11 thing and a puppet thing and like, God, it, there's a lot that just I feel like you can't really put in a musical piece that, uh, you, like, there's a lot here that I think is interesting and worth looking into, but it's just stuff that you shouldn't be including into a song and putting it on YouTube. Because it's like, it feels really disrespectful. Disrespectful is the word, yeah. And this whole thing, is, and this song specifically, has rethemed the album to me to be like, not a story of tragedy, but the story of 9-11. And, uh, I don't know. It's like a tangential piece, and it makes sense why it's a bonus album. You definitely can get the full, you can definitely get like, a concrete story without it, but you kind of need it to understand Joe's intentions. I'm putting this at the bottom. Sorry, Variations fans, they just... Nope. I'm not touching this one. And that's my ranking of all the songs. This has been something I've been kind of wanting to do for a little while, and uh, I'm not too, like, uh... And I've been kind of busy with other stuff, so I haven't had a lot of opportunities to really work on long, edited video essay content. So I thought I'd do this to satiate people for a little while. If you agree with me, tell me in the comments down below. If you disagree with me, also tell me in the comments down below. Tell me why I'm wrong. Maybe I'll agree with you. And maybe like and subscribe if you enjoy. I've been Lexi. I recorded this at 6 a.m. after not sleeping. Goodbye.